back in. I mean, I have to say, when I, when I heard that, like, people actually watch this show, I was, I was actually... <laughs> All right. What's up, everybody? Hang on, let me get rid of this stuff. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, Sports with Shenanigans, podcast number 15. I, maybe that's some sort of a landmark, I don't know. But uh, it's me, Drunk Guy, coming at you. I have a bit of a cold this week, so I'm feeling a little under the weather. All right, I, be, I thought I was getting over it, so uh, let's see. How, how did it go? On Sunday night, I knew I was, like, getting a little sick. Monday, I took the day off because I was feeling pretty sick when I woke up. And then just took the whole day off, slept a bunch, drank a bunch of water, and then I felt really good. And Tuesday rolls around. I'm okay still. So I go back to my old lifestyle of drinking a lot of booze and uh, and smoking and stuff like that. And now I feel like shit again <laughs> by Wednesday. <laughs> so n how not to handle a cold? Fortunately, the lovely Ginger has agreed to supply me with, wh what are they called? Uh, I found them. They're called Cold Ease. I never tried them before. I bought the package because it looked pretty cool. It said that not only does it kill a lot of your symptoms, but it also helps you get over the cold faster. Try it. I tried it once. My cold was over in a day and a half. This episode of Sports and Shenanigans brought to you by Cold Ease. <laughs> All right. so, Shameless plug. <laughs> so, yeah. So, hopefully I get better by the next one. I'm sure it won't be for another, like, month or so. Whatever. Har next hiatus will be who knows how long that will extend for but yeah so it's been a little while since we talked about football our predictions were uh let's cool. see they're, yeah they're off by quite a bit unfortunately we underestimated the colts and overestimated the steelers well also i think we more screwed up is where we oh yeah we screwed up the them. bracket yeah. if, if we had because if, if we had picked the colts over on the <clears> other side then we might have ended up with the Patriots Colts. Well, no, I probably would have still picked we, them Yeah, up. so we basically seeded the wild cards improperly. Yeah, but we weren't sure. And, and, and who won the wild card depended... Um, yeah, I guess we misseeded the wild cards, and whoever won the number one and number two seed played the w worst record of the ones that won the wild card game. So, yeah, in the first so. round, we had the Colts at, uh, against the Ravens, and we had the Steelers against the Bengals. So, and that's, the, yeah, the opposite of how that should have been. But, yeah, we, we said the Colts would go on and the Steelers would go on, but who would have known the Steelers would have... Uh, Not shown up for a playoff game? Yeah, yeah and their like, dumbass coach would have put fucking Ben Roethlisberger after the, out there after getting knocked on his ass that many times. Yeah. Right. Uh, at, oh, man, you should have seen it. If, if you missed that game, go back and watch it again. And notice how the backup quarterback... For Ben Roethlisberger comes out mainly just watch roll. the fourth quarter. Like he comes in and it's third and twenty one, and he totally converts the converts it to a first down. Well, he he got like eighteen on the first play, and then he converts it on the next play, and then yeah, they send Ben Roethlisberger out. He throws an interception like first play. Yeah, like oh you idiots, what are you doing? The referee knew you were freaking dazed. Yeah, but your coach didn't. Yeah, Why I mean, they, they were examining there? Ben for a concussion, and then they said, they're like, oh, you're fine, Chipper, go get him. Like, like no, that doesn't seem like a very wise decision, especially since, like, they send out the backup, and in, like, two seconds, he does more than Roethlisberger has done, like, the entire second half. So, I don't know. Just questionable decisions, and uh, overall bad play by Roethlisberger, unable to compensate for the fact that Le'Veon Bell is out, and... They, they took a running back that they had just gotten on that previous Tuesday and started him. So, I mean, they were in pretty dire straits without Le'Veon Bell, which is unfortunate for them, but Ben didn't pick up any of that slack, and the Steelers were left high and dry without a without a playoff chance. I was really disappointed just in the way we played on both sides of the ball, realistically. It was, it was kind of sad. I mean, and... The Ravens do not have a good secondary. Like, if you point out any large weakness of the Ravens, it's the secondary. And we have amazing receivers. And, yeah. Well, what can you say about Ben? But, <laughs> like, we should have been able to do a lot more in that game. I mean, yes, we had no running game, and it was completely shut down. But 
we should have been able to do a lot more in that game. We just played really poorly on both sides of the ball, and special teams was god awful. I would say. I mean, it was like we we just didn't show up for that game at all. Like, well, especially in the entire, second half. Like, that's how our entire season went, though. It was like we were so inconsistent. It was constantly like up and down. Like we would show up and have an amazing game, and Ben would do awesome and throw six touchdown passes, and we'd stomp on these good teams, and then we'd get beat by Tampa Bay. You yeah, <laughs> like it's, it was. It's it, weird, weird how that shit happens. Horribly inconsistent season. At, at le- in the least, like if you're gonna say one thing about the Steelers, I say that they shouldn't have even been vying for a for a wild card spot at the end there. They did secure the division, yeah, but they it shouldn't have even been a question to be honest. Like they should have had the division on lock at like two weeks before the playoffs. You but know, but when they were playing well, they were playing really well, and it looked like Ben had gotten his act together because really Ben had a lot of great games. I mean, like. Zach was talking about the six touchdown game, but he, but there was he, but he was getting to the there games. was two games in a row where he threw. Wait, six hey, touchdowns. Hey, before we go any further, we have our our lovely uh, Steelers fan guest on with us. I, I did like a little random video about it. yeah, random guest, lovely guest, whatever you want to call him. Yeah, if you, if you missed the little <laughs> video, we <laughs> yeah, I did a little highlight about him. It, it was pretty funny, like. I didn't even get to talk about the defense. Like <laughs> that was pretty hilarious. Like looking back on it, yeah. but that anyway, was hilarious. that was pretty awesome actually. <laughs> that was my favorite episode I think of all the ones we've done so far. Yeah, that was a pretty good one. But anyway, I still stand by my original statement: the Steelers are awesome. We're just having a rough season. <laughs> yeah, the Steelers did better than the 49ers this year. Holy shit! And the Dolphins. <laughs> yeah. And the Dolphins, unfortunately, both those teams are supposed to be really good this year. Yeah. But they're both gonna kick ass next year. Well, I don't think I think I still think the Dolphins are flying under the radar, and people are starting to dismiss the Forty ers as a bad team already. So we'll see. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see, see what, what happens, happens when, next when year. they get a new coach. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I still think it was foolish of them to get rid of Harbaugh. But. I think so too. But we get. But we're, we're getting. But the but Tom Sula, the uh, assistant coach, got promoted today. So we have our new coach. We haven't replaced Greg Roman yet, who went with Rex Ryan to the Bills, uh, which should be crazy, but. We, uh, but I'm hoping we get the Patriots offensive coordinator, though we were talking earlier that if he leaves the Patriots, it's going to be for a head coaching job, which is too bad. Yeah. But, but, uh, but, but if for some reason he I mean, it seems to... like if you go, like, okay, so when you're, when you're talking about, like, a corporate ladder, there's, like, there's, like, downgrades, there's a lateral move, and then there's, like, an upgrade or, like, a promotion or whatever. Like, the question is, does he think he's ready for a head coaching job? Maybe, he, maybe, uh, maybe he likes it. maybe he likes being the offensive coordinator. But like from what he's shown with the Patriots, he deserves a promotion, not a lateral movement necessarily. Unless that's what he feels like he can specialize in the best. That's why I don't think we're gonna get. And him, like whatever, he can be the him. highest. He can be the highest paid offensive coordinator in the league. I don't care. He probably deserves it for all I know. But or maybe he'll look at the 49ers and go, well, man, you guys have 19 starters on injured reserve. And you get you get them all back next year. Oh, uh, well, you know, I bet I could win a Super Bowl with that team. <laughs> I mean, it's possible. It's like it's always like good to put yourself in a new challenge when uh, when you're in like your profession or whatever. Like it just seems like people get complacent at times. They like they're comfortable, kind of like the Seattle Seahawks at the beginning of the season. They like complacent, like oh yeah, this is what we are, and never think that you know you need to like give yourself more challenges to overcome to actually improve or whatever. But uh, yeah. Well, then, then speaking of Seattle, they once they got Chancellor back, their entire Dude. defense just like clicked. He it was like boom, <laughs> it was sonic boom. I bet you anything. Like you could go back ten years and not find like a secondary as effective as the Seattle Seahawks secondary right now. Like for the mm-hmm. last two years at least, like they're just insanely good. I don't know, like, like the by far the best the Niners, in the league. Yeah. I was like maybe maybe their stats aren't the best, like throughout the season because they had a bad first six weeks or whatever, but I would say that they're the, by far the best in the league right now. Even if you took all the teams out, like, they have all been relegated out of the playoffs, but, like, take every team right now, and then they're still, like, ahead above any of the other teams in that respect. Well, the, the team that had the best passing defense in the league in 2014 had, uh, was the Carolina Panthers, and Seattle just stomped them, so uh, I think I think they're, uh, I think they got it all figured out. And Seattle still ended up fifth, even after struggling on defense the first half of the season. They were able to come back and get fifth. Yeah. I mean, th- that's I mean, got to be a lot of consistent weeks of first. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's pretty respectable. The one, like, the one thing I'd say about the, 
the Carolina Panthers and Seattle Seahawks game is it's like you didn't even get to see in my opinion you didn't even get to see what the Seahawks are really capable of in that game because what I saw was a team that like oftentimes in sports and in any sort of competition if the team if the better team the like you know objectively better team knows they are better and can just cruise through and they know like they're like things are going their way like when seattle's up 14 7 in the i think it was the second quarter they're like they know that they're like cruising along and they're gonna win this game they don't have to try to like beat you into the ground they don't want to like get injured like play in like 110 percent or whatever and i think that they really just like took that game took it in stride and just like you know, they didn't leave it all out there on the field. I, I don't really think. They beat the Panthers when they needed to beat them, and once the Panthers' defense got tired, they started running away with it. Yeah, um, I mean, and it seemed effortless almost yeah. for them. The Panthers scored 17 points, sure. They could have probably shut them out if they really wanted to. But yeah. It's not worth wearing your players out and stuff like that or risking anything when you know, like, you've got this in the bag or whatever. Anyway, so I want to just mention that Let's talk about Seattle's chances in the rest of the playoffs, and so uh, we're on the subject of them right now. And I just want to lay a disclaimer out there: I really don't want Seattle to repeat. I don't want them to win the Super Bowl again. <laughs> I don't think anybody in this room does. <laughs> but you know, th I, I'm not going to deny that they're probably the best team. And against anybody that they would, so I'm going to give them like a 60-40 chance to beat the Packers. I say Packers have like. Just below a coin flip to win this one, yeah, like a tw they have like a twenty point uh, advantage over the Packers, or not twenty points, but twenty percent advantage over the Packers. As far as my concern is, for them to beat them, um, and if they go to the the Super Bowl, I guarantee you, I I give them more than a fifty percent edge to beat the Patriots or the um, Colts, unless the Colts like just crush the Patriots and they show something that we've never seen from them. Yeah, because for the first time all season, <coughs> well, so far this whole season, Andrew Luck has carried a, carried his team. Andrew Luck has done it himself. Well, T.Y. Hilton's good too, and they're running I forget the name of their running back, but he's good as well. You're right, but I, I, I'm giving credit to the um, the Colts offense, but uh, and I, I singled out Andrew Luck because he really is that awesome, but the, the Colts offense has carried it. Their special team has not done anything special. Their defense has been okay at best. That was um, it's it's their offense. They can score. They can outscore their opponents every time. Yeah, they have an insane offense. This last game, they just played against the Broncos, and I know Peyton Manning wasn't 100. percent I know the Broncos have been not playing as good as they started off the season playing, but the Colts they're like a Saints offense. But if you rewind time like five years, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're they're kind of almost like a very similar team to what the Saints were because the Saints never had the like Colts the are, best yeah. the best off, uh, defense ever, but they always had like an offense that could. Like, you know, just to constantly create points and stuff. And every now and then their defense will click at least to a, to a point and get them to a Super Bowl. Drew Brees has got a ring, doesn't he? So yeah. anyway, back to <laughs> let's go back. Let's bring it back to the Seahawks. So, okay, so Seahawks. Seahawks against the Packers. What's going to give them the edge or what's going to give the Packers the edge? What do you, what do you say, guest, guest boy, guest man? Uh, if anything, I think the, just the fact that Rodgers is still injured is a huge detriment to yeah. the Packers regardless of the fact that they were able to overcome that in this last game it was close and it was a lot closer than it should have been against the Cowboys sorry to all the Cowboys fans out there but uh, you guys shouldn't have had that much of an opportunity and if Rodgers really had the ability to scramble and move like he usually can not that he's a scram known for his scrambling and he's a pocket passer but like at, that game wouldn't have been as close sure um you know, and, and if Rodgers comes back totally healthy, I actually give it more of a 50-50. I mean, yeah, Seattle's doing really well, but I think teams are starting to figure out a little bit how to try and shut them down. I mean, we've seen people put up really good fights, um, and Seattle is a hell of a team, but I don't know. I think it's going to be a great match. I mean, they both have... I hope it's close. They both close. have beasts of running backs, you mm -hmm. know. I mean, with Lacey and with... Lynch. Lacey and Lynch, I mean, they almost you know. looked exact. They, they could put on each other's uniform and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. 
So from afar. Well, so they both have. They both that's have racist. A, first of all, no, not I'm just be, kidding. Not, not because they all look this. All running backs. Not because all running backs look the same. <laughs> but because. What you don't think that all five foot six muscular black guys look the same? Come on. <laughs> they all pretty much have dreads for some. No. Only, <laughs> only when they're smashing through a defensive line with a football. All I'm <laughs> saying is, same. or what I'm trying to say is, is, I mean, realistically, they both have. They both have really quality running backs. They both have pretty good run defense. They both have decent defense. I think Seattle's defense is a little better than um, Packers defense, maybe. You know, and as far as offenses go, I I think realistically, I think when Rodgers is getting yeah. going with his offense, his offense, his passing offense is a little better than Russell Wilson and his passing offense. But Wilson can scramble, but and I, that's, I, a, I that's think a that, separate threat. You know, so I think the level of the Seahawks defense, like, got kind of neglig or negligifies that i don't know what the hell word i'm trying negates that yeah um but i want to go back to something you said where you brought up the fact that like rogers was hurt because i i heard this like point stressed like a million times from you know analysts or like sports journalists or whatever what um the cowboys failed to do is they failed to actually attack that weakness the lack of mobility on rogers especially in the second half of that game and i can like i didn't see it in the um in the actual heat of the game like just watching the game but thinking back if that was a mistake they made i don't think seattle would make that same mistake so if aaron Rodgers isn't healthy or if he's not able to move around then i think that that's a really bad sign and i don't think the seahawks the i mean the seahawks whooped up on the panthers I don't think they're going to take the same approach of like, oh, yeah, we can beat the Panthers with our hands tied, like one hand tied behind our backs, basically, was what the attitude I felt when I was watching that game. I don't think they're going to try, like, you know, give it like a 75, 80% effort against yeah, the if Packers. Yeah, but think about it, Seattle is arguably probably the <clears> best <throat> team in the league right now. And uh, of all the teams in the league, Seattle's the best, we're pretty sure of. The Panthers, of the la of the final eight teams to make the playoffs, were the probably the worst. The Panthers were, were number eight. I mean, we, of all the teams that were that made it to the divisional round, and they were fairly shit. I'll give you that. But like the fact that you know it didn't they they basically doubled the score of the Panthers, and it looked like they didn't even try. But it wasn't until the second half, which is which actually brings me back to the Panther or the <clears throat> the Cowboys and Packers game too, is because part of the reason why things started um, how we how how you said they the Cowboys had trouble where they made a mistake not attacking the weakness of Aaron Rodgers in the second half, where they tried to the first half. Well, I don't think it was that they made a mistake. I think they weren't able to. Yeah, they that's were exhausted. what I was going to say. I mean, the, the, the Packers have a great offensive line. I mean, that's one of the things that they do well. I mean, because yeah. Rodgers is a pocket passer. They have to protect him. That's one of like the keys to their game, is having a strong offensive line and being able to do with do what they want at the at the line of scrimmage, you know, make holes for Lacey to run through, yeah. protect Rodgers when he needs to throw. I mean, don't that. they have like a star player on their offensive line? But I, I mean, it may sound really dumb. Isn't BJ Raji uh, an offensive line? Is he D line? D line? I don't know. Honestly. I don't know. I don't. Follow, I, I never know. I don't follow the Packers close names. enough to know their names. But, I think uh, okay. just, but there's that big, huge guy. I think I know who you're talking about. They, were, <laughs> they brought it up. But if you compare the um, but if you compare the Cowboys defense versus who got exhausted, I think. To Seattle's defense, their linebackers and their defensive line, I expect the Seattle defense to outlast a defense like the Cowboys. I don't think they'll even even against the Packers' offense. I think Seattle's defense will be. Uh, I don't think they'll be as tired by the time they get to the fourth quarter. Yeah. Um. I think. Um. I think it's very possible the Packers could take down the Seattle Seahawks. I think. I well, I think it's a possibility, but I'm I'm gonna say that I'm gonna give it to the Seahawks, but and we did in our bracket to actually have the Packers and the Seahawks on one side, but I'm and gonna we did give it to the Seahawks, didn't we? I, I still think the yeah. Seahawks are gonna win, but but if the Packers do win, I want to see the Packers win this game. It's gonna be because of two things. One, the injury to Aaron Rodgers is is exaggerated to throw off the game plan of the other team, or two. They with that awesome offensive line and with Lacey, they get their running game going. Because the only teams that have had a um, that have success that, against that have, Seattle that have had success against Seattle are the ones that, that ran the ball against them. 
And it's the only way to really beat Seattle. Converting cause... third and shorts is, like, insanely important against Seattle. Like, it's so, like, it's always important, but against Seattle, like, if you never convert a third and short, you're going to have a very low-scoring game for yourself. Yeah. Like, that's Who, what I think. Who's that second receiver for the Packers? Is, is Jordy Nelson, and it's the second guy. Um, there's, like, four other see, guys. Yeah, there's are you ta- other Are guys. you talking about, oh, God, I wish I could remember Well, there's the rookie There's Adams, a whole bunch. But, well, because, well, they're... they're Greg Nelson? No, 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 no. Yeah, Greg, Jordy Nelson. Greg, no, oh, God damn it. Oh, Roman? Isn't that? No, Greg Roman's like a coach. <laughs> damn it. All right. So, oh, I, let me just bring up a side point while you find the Packers receivers. So, I want, I really want the Seahawks-Packers game to be close. And, like, I don't, like, I honestly don't care who wins. As long as it's a good game that shows, like, the strengths of both teams. Because... One thing that I know for sure is that, like, okay, I'm going to bring your younger brother, who one day, if the Packers win this game, he's going to be on the podcast because I'm not going to let him get out of it. Um, <laughs> but he was like, oh, such a good game. Oh, man, that was, like, the best game of the season. I'm, I, I'm ho- I hope you would say that exact same thing if it was a really close game like that and, and the won. Cowboys won. Yeah. Like, I just hope, like, that you actually give a shit about the sport and not just, like, your team. Because... I mean, it's it's one thing to just, you know, bandwagon a team and not know anything. Or, or like, you can actually appreciate the sport, but it seems like Nick does appreciate He plays, like, football, video games, all that shit. But, I mean, I hope I hope you can, like, at least, like, put aside your, your personal uh, affection for the Packers if they lose in a close matchup with the Seahawks. Because I honestly could see this being a blowout against the Packers. And I, I hope, like, if they win... That'd be insane, and if they win by blowout, I'd actually be okay with it. But <laughs> if they lose, I hope it's close. Because if they get blown out, I'm just gonna like be mad because it was a waste of my time to turn on the TV. You know? Yeah, like, uh, I'm with you both. <clears throat> I'm with you on that for basically any game, though. Realistically, I would always rather see a close game than somebody stomping on. Even if my, you know, even that game where like my Steelers just flat fucking stomped on the Colts earlier this year. Which I was stoked about because I was like, yeah. When you see the score awesome. afterwards, you're like, nice, we won. But, but like, at the same time, I would have almost rather have been close just because, like, I mean, I was super stoked about that game because it was really, like, one of the first games of the season that we really stepped up and played really well. And I felt like we actually, the reason we won that game was because we played really well. But, like, I'd have been okay with it even if we played that way and lost just because we played that well. Like, yeah. And when you get to the playoffs, it's like teams have spent the entire regular season kind of like displaying their like consistent ish level. You know, the Steelers kind of was a was an outlier because they almost couldn't establish a consistent level. Though they were on definitely on the positive side of it, they almost couldn't establish a consistent level. But as teams go through the regular season, they're trying to like you know they make it to the playoffs where you everybody's kind of got an idea of like what kind of level of team this is or like what their strengths are and like what they're going to be the best at or like what things they're they exceed at and then to see a team two teams that on paper should be near each other in the same level and then just one just gets, one just gets even yeah. and like it's the better team in some times it's like you you thought yeah, that like when we got beat by the jets or like when we got beat by Tampa by the Bay. ravens for fuck's sake like the like all signs pointed to the fact that the steelers were the better team and because they had the injury and because of, like, bad play by Ben and, like, bad coaching decisions, all this clusterfuck, that, like, it looked like a really shitty team. And it wasn't. Like, well, it's just misleading. It wasn't a really shitty team, but we played really shitty. No, but people that you know? hate the Steelers are gonna, like, take that game and be like, ha, every bit of the season, every bit of the regular season meant nothing. Like, and it's not true. Like, they showed that they actually have, like, a propensity to actually, like, take out teams with, like, a freaking whatever like just insanely hard like just throw them on the ground and stomp on them getting their head kicked in like on the sidewalk curb stomp bitch <laughs> like that's funny i was at the chiropractor today and my, my guy that gave me the adjustment was like oh um he just told me well, how hard it is to actually you know really hurt your neck and stuff like that because i was whining about the adjustment and and he was telling me he's like oh yeah the really you know the only like you know like those karate movies where they Try to like break your neck. You can't actually do that. Like your your neck's too strong for you that. You just turn your neck. Yeah, <laughs> and, and and he's like, oh, but you know what would work? That you know where you where they make them put the mouth in their curve and they you know because it breaks all your. You know, he start, he's, yeah, he starts going over the scene he's in like the American this, History X and. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's just like getting some ideas about how he's gonna deal with his ex-wife <laughs> <laughs> one day. 
Like, that actually might do something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's <laughs> something about messing up something back there so you can read. I don't know. You may think All right, that. so let's move on from the Seahawks-Packers. Um, oh, Packers, the, best of luck to you. Well, before but, I forget. Oh, yeah, we wanted to know the, the, the receivers. The wide receiver that all of us should freaking know the name of and didn't think of is Randall, Randall Cobb. Oh, oh, God, yeah. There's yeah. actually even yeah. more than that. Yep. Yeah, so Who's number 88? Um, 87, maybe? No. Oh, 88? That's the running... Uh, what's his face? Uh, where is he? There isn't one. Wait, go go back down to 88, the 80s. I don't think there's one. I think you're thinking of 88. That's the... Uh, or is Des Bryant 81? God damn it. Now it's a bunch of dead air. There's a... Uh, no, there's the 88s 80s? on the... Uh, 88 no, no 88. the Cowboys. Is what you're thinking oh, of. Are you thinking of 87, there. Jordy Nelson? No, no, no. Oh, he, maybe he went to a different team. I don't know. But they, but they got Jordy... B, there's BJ <laughs> Raji. <laughs> BJ Raji, yeah! What's he is play? a defensive... He is a defensive lineman. You're right. All right. Fair enough. But anyway, so they got Randall Cobb and Jordy Nelson. And then, so if they find some way to cover those guys, Devontae Adams may have another badass game like he did this last weekend. All right. Well, apparently I don't know uh, anything about the Packers. Yeah, neither do I, but we're learning. (laughs) That's how we've done this entire (laughs) season of NFL. It's just like all learning. All right, so if the Packers show up, if the offensive line protects Aaron Rodgers... And he's got three badass receivers to throw to. Even Seattle's quarterbacks are going to be like, whoa, what do I do? Shrimming can't I think the tight ends are like a key against Seattle as well. Yeah. Like, the the cornerbacks are just too good on Seattle, and the safeties are pretty damn good, too. The safeties that. Yeah, but, but those Cam safeties Chancellor and quarterbacks. Is a fucking beast, man. Yeah, that guy is awesome. <laughs> Oh, we even have a little video about him. And he's, he, I don't know, he's so good at reading the quarterback, it's ridiculous. It reminds me of, like, Troy Palomalu when he was in his younger years, Mm -hmm. you know. Like, like, Alden Smith before his suspension. Mm -hmm. All right, so, on the other side of the bracket, we have the Broncos. Okay, do we want to talk about the Broncos losing the Colts? I kind of want to talk about the Broncos just a little bit. So, So Peyton Manning should pick up. Let's talk about Manning and John Fox. By the way, uh, John Elway gave a, like, ridiculously ungraceful speech <laughs> towards, like, towards John Fox, because he, he got fired, obviously. And so, <laughs> he starts up the speech, he's like, I want to start this speech off, like, this is John Elway talking. He's like, I want to start this speech off with a big thanks to John Elway. And this is, like, the speech where he's firing John Fox, he's like... He's like, wait a sec. I meant John Fox. Like, he just like covered it. Like, he's like, thanks me. I totally made the right decision and fired somebody. I, I mean, like, and John Elway kind of has a reputation as being an asshole. I heard a story that <clears throat> apparently he was he was having a party at his house and there was a um a female golfer, like a professional women's golfer, and uh, she wanted to play him at pool, so they played at pool, and I guess he she like whooped them at pool. He, she, like, beat him pretty badly, and he had her removed from the fucking party. What? What an asshole. Like, if, I don't know if that's true, but, like, if that is, that guy's a fucking asshole. Holy shit. And a dumbass. <laughs> he could have he played it off like he let her win and gotten some food games, but... <laughs> Nah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's probably not too much of a concern for him. Yeah. I can't yeah. imagine that's difficult <laughs> for him, really, you know, like... <laughs> he goes to, like, a whorehouse or, like, a brothel in Vegas. He's like... Uh, do I get any of that John Elway discount? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like that's not an existent discount, sir. Uh, kiss my Super Bowl rings or whatever. Hey, the fuck hey. Uh, how's it going? We though? were just talking about you. Nice. We were. We were just talking about your love of the. So, Green what Bay do you think is gonna happen this uh, here weekend? Hold on. Old, uh, let's show. Let's show the, everyone the his awesome hoodie. Oh, thanks, bro. Put on the hood. Put Uh-oh. on the hood. <laughs> All right. Wait, what the hell? <laughs> you ever see what my mom got me for Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> Give us a little turn. Huh? Give us a little turn. Yeah, you fucking drunk. You wish. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> that's, it's like an that's Assassin's Creed. classic, Street. actually. I like that. It's got a face mask that comes across as like an actual hat <laughs> hood. You, really? Yeah. I'm actually, not. <laughs> it's pretty epic. That's awesome. Having that's troubles. Cool. How did you get this to stick? Uh, it was an accident. <laughs> yeah. But no, I'm scared shitless. <laughs> I think the Packers are going to have a hell of a game. Uh, the defense can you has to do step what up you twice yeah. as much against than they did against the Cowboys because let's face it, Seattle's got a better defense. And not to mention, I don't know. It's honestly going to come down to Lacey. 
If Lacey doesn't yeah. give you, if you we don't, were just if, talking about that. That's what we if said. If they can get the run going, yeah, if they get the run game going, they can beat Seattle. Yeah, but it's not. They can't pull the same shit where they kept Lacey out of the half the game like they did against the Cowboys. Lacey's got to be in there whooping some ass. Well, the whole idea was to get Parks running, so that way Lacey would be at full strength the second half, and it worked, didn't it? Sort of. Starks isn't the same kind of runner as Lacey is, though. Lacey generates momentum. When yeah, he starts true. rolling, Rogers starts rolling. Yeah, but and then everyone else starts going like, we were oh also my God, ta- they're yeah, all doing great. What we were also talking about was that you don't just have Randall Cobb and Jordy Nelson anymore. you got this Devontae I Adams know. guy that's like came out of nowhere. Holy crap. And that's oh. and that's why getting the run game is so important because if they have to worry about the run game, it's going to free up receivers. Yep. And if, so if Lacey gets going with that awesome mm. offensive line, then all three of those receivers are going to be like, oh, oh, Richard Sherman, I thought you were good. Oh, what, what's the matter? Where were you? I just <laughs> caught that pass. And pretty much, if we can get Adams to step up and be like another Jordy Nelson, Packers will be unstoppable. Cause that's Actually, three, I, that's, I, I think Jordy Nelson wish he could be like Adams. That's what? three receivers you'd have to cover, not to mention Lacey on the ground. Yeah. With Starks, like, what the hell are you supposed to do on defense? Because Rodgers already is an amazing quarterback. He yeah. can run it if he needs to. He can even hobble it. Fuck. <laughs> no matter, he can, he can even hobble it. it. No, that's gonna be a bit, that's gonna be a big issue though. And that's why I'm worried because Rogers can't move like he normally can. And that was one of our why yeah, our defense has to step points. it up. Yeah, yeah they need to give Rogers okay. at least like four or five seconds. Seattle's done for. Even I, I've heard some conspiracy theories like, like they gave Rogers some like a little something something at halftime. That's why he was, like, out there moving a little better. <laughs> and so they need to give him, like, a double dose before the Seattle game, you know what I'm saying? Like the secret stuff? Yeah, <laughs> like the secret stuff. A little Space Jam reference there. Yep. <laughs> the word is that, uh, <laughs> what's his name? Lance Armstrong is, uh, <coughs> has become a chemist, and now he's, like, working behind the scenes to create, like, these insane, like, Lance elite, Armstrong elite performance enhancing, <laughs> enhancing drugs. <laughs> He like uh, works. He works in like Aaron Rodgers' basement because his career is shit now. So he has to like <laughs> find a new line of work. Screw steroids. We'll just start taking Armstrongs. That's what we'll call it now. <laughs> yeah, all it is is like a pill with like a little bit of Lance Armstrong's blood in it, and he like he takes it. And he like if he wanted to, he could win the Tour de France. But he 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 needs to win the Super Bowl before he can go on to those kind of expeditions. Uh, anyway, so this we is, this is what we refer to as the shenanigans portion of the show. <laughs> Um, so, what were you, oh yeah, we were talking about the Broncos. So anyway, John Fox is fired. Do you think they should have given him another chance? Because he's brought them to the semifinals the last, like, three or four yeah, years. Oh, yeah, we'll oh, hey, yeah, actually, if you're yeah. up here. Yes, please. Yeah, I'm kind. Uh, you got cold and wet? <laughs> wet? Yeah. Alright, so, <laughs> good one. John Fox is fired. Did he go- deserve to go out? Or should he have stayed with the team and should Peyton, the blame line Peyton Manning a little bit? I, I think because he had he, like he, one of his Peyton Manning like playoff moments where he just doesn't show up. I think it's know? dangerous to be a coach right now. I mean, the 49ers' <clears throat> last coach got him to four freaking championships and then and a Super Bowl, and then he gets fired for having won eight and eight seasons. Sure. Yeah, it's like John you get Fox your team to the a two straight or a Super Bowl and then a divisional round and. That was today. Like your team gets to like a top eight finish and you're just like they're just like you're fucking fired <laughs> not good enough top and eight is not good enough we want number one the, the like the, the coaches coming in for like the new coaching at like head coaching application they're just like getting an interview with john elway and they're just like their legs are like all shaking they're just like <laughs> i really want this job please don't kill me like <laughs> all right now if i give you peyton manning you think you can win a fucking game jesus <laughs> well he is a little old Fired. <laughs> You're really bringing it back next year? You're fired. <laughs> you know what? That's a good topic of conversation. Who thinks Manning is coming back next year? I don't think fucking Man- Manning knows if he's coming back next year. I think both the Mannings should leave the NFL <laughs> and start their own bed and breakfast it's called Brooklyn. Manning and Manning. Eli too? Come on, no? Oh, please. <laughs> you know what's a common misconception? It's like, Eli Manning has two Super Bowls and he was voted the MVP in both. Pete Manning's only got one. And so people, like, jump to these conclusions, like, Peyton Manning's a worse quarterback than Eli. And I'm like, no, don't, what do you do? Like, just look <laughs> at the game and, like, just, Peyton Manning's, like, ten times better with his, with a blindfold on. What the hell? Yeah, Eli Manning's, like, a, like, Tony Romo. <laughs> He's, like, Tony Romo with, like, <laughs> he, 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 like, but he doesn't get laid Romo. very often. Yeah, he doesn't get laid, laid as often Romo's as Tony category. Romo. Yeah, I would, yeah. I would say I don't think Eli's even and half the quarterback. And he has two Super Bowls, and Tony has zero. So, like, 
But the thing is, is that yeah, like, but Tony it, Romo dated Jessica Simpson when she was right. That's what, was that get, that's what I was. That's what I was getting onto. I was like, so Tony Romo gets laid a lot more. So you can't and tell so, me like, Eli's gonna get something like that. So he's just like <laughs> he's, just <laughs> he's just used <laughs> to getting hot chicks at this point. <laughs> Eli just goes to his brother's parties. <laughs> there you go. Hey, his brother's like, which which one aren't you banging? You want you want to hook me up? <laughs> I just Aww. imagine Peyton like hooking up with a bunch of like. <laughs> That's Eli's singers. best line. Hey, you know, that's my brother. <laughs> oh, hey, you see me on that Citizen Echo Drive watch commercial? <laughs> what up, baby? Eli, I got you <coughs> something. Uh, this, what, what's your name, honey? Destiny. <laughs> oh, God. Eli, go with your destiny. <laughs> look at him to the Greek reference there. Use my name two ways. <laughs> I, I can't imagine that, like, Eli ever, like, flaunts his he's like oh you got a super bowl ring big bro i got two and then peyton like if, if that happened to me i just beat bitch slap him like <laughs> shut the fuck up give me that <laughs> they, this is the way they talk to you i just imagine peyton manning's like having sex with you know the girl that sings the like wait, peyton wait all hold day on. for you imagine Sunday peyton manning night. having sex yeah that's what lauren does in the free time <laughs> Hey, <laughs> only when that, like, only when it's the intro song for Sunday Night Football, and it's like, is it Carrie Underwood? He just can't help but daydream about it. Oh, uh, yeah, it's Carrie Underwood. Well, every now and then you gotta get... His balding hair just flowing through the wind. Mm. <laughs> Some people get bored with that. Well, in my in my, in my imagination, he has, like, basically like Herculean style, you know, like... Oh, flowing locks, what? I got oh, you. Kevin Sorbo? Sorbo? Yeah. Kevin yeah. Sorbo hair, yes. <laughs> I want him in my football team. He can be my linebacker. Uh, that's a hell of a fantasy, Will. <laughs> you might want to keep that to yourself from now on. Just, you know. All right. Fair enough. As long as Jessica Simpson's in that You better hope your game. girlfriend doesn't watch these podcasts. She'd be like, Lauren, you want something you want to tell me? Uh, maybe anyway. Tuesday, maybe? You, gotta, you, you know in his luck, she'll just, like, dye her hair and then cut it into that shape. Oh, that <laughs> oh God. <laughs> she, she, like, puts on, on a fake mustache. <laughs> puts on some armor. <laughs> It's like, what are you doing, baby? She's like, you want to go fight some evil spirits or something? Yeah. No. As long as you put on that Eli Manning jersey. <laughs> that would be like the or like a veritable orgasm of a turnoff. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Peyton Manning, he hangs it up. Yes or no? Peyton Manning. And should he? If he doesn't, you know, like. What, like, do you think you should? I'm kind of with Chris on this one. I think he should retire and be a coach. Yep. Or yeah. at least an offensive coordinator Pat, or something. I mean, because the way that he can diagnose the <clears throat> game is unbelievable. It's like there's nobody better out there on the line of scrimmage at seeing something, breaking it down, and trying to call an audible or, or you know, just do something against it anyway. Hell, think, he could coach the Broncos, for God's sake. Like, he could coach that. He could be the new head coach for that team. I think I think he retires and then comes <coughs> back the next year for a different team. <laughs> and then <laughs> he's not gonna play like Brett Favre. Yeah. yeah, exactly. He's gonna be like Brett Favre, and, and, and then he's gonna end up um, commentating next to Troy Aikman. How cool would it be though if he retired and like coached little league? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he just like, yeah. Apparently, my my son's new little league or <coughs> Pop Warner football coach is Peyton Manning. Who knew? <laughs> that he's just that like, would be like the <clears throat> sweetest luck ever. He's like, you go to like the practice instead of like. Okay, when you catch the ball, you want to make a triangle with your hand so it can go in there. It's like, <laughs> he's just got this, like, big chalkboard with, like, a bunch of X's and O's and, like, arrows on it. And their kids are like, I'm only in second grade, Peyton. Or Mr. Manning. <laughs> whoever Mr. the Manning. fuck they call him. after six weeks, they're actually following along with him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My voice is starting to go out, you guys. Your coach's name is Peyton Manning? Yeah, no relation. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's got like one of those like player. Ron Burgundy style mustaches to <laughs> yes. like try and disguise himself. <laughs> All right. Plus the fake glasses and nose. So know. the Broncos are out. Colts and Patriots. Who's going on? Patriots. 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 Yeah. Unless. <clears throat> well, I don't know. I mean, Andrew dude, what if the Colts go on? Will that? What, what will that say about the Colts if they win? Can they win the Super Bowl? If their defense no. shows up like they did last game. It, 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 I don't if, think they can win the Super Bowl. If it's though. not Andrew Luck, you're doing, doing it by, them, by himself. I think the Pats have a lot better shot against the. I agree, though. Against either the Hawks or the, the Packers than the Colts do. Yeah. So, I expect so, it to be. I expect it to be so let's Patriots. Go. Of quarterbacks in drafted Super in the last 8 to 10 years. Let's go around the room and give you, like, the percentage, like, you know. The differential or whatever. All right, percentage chance the Colts win. Thirty. Thirty to seventy. I'm gonna say, I'll give him a little more than that. I'll I'll give him thirty five, thirty five, sixty five for the 
It won't surprise me if they win, but I I don't believe they're going to. I think I the the question is can they outscore the Patriots? Because this isn't going to yeah. be a very defensive game. Yeah, was, that's I don't know. I think it's not, I don't think the defense of the Colts can stop the pa- the pass at all. I mean, I, I, I don't I, I don't think the Colts can stop the run game like the uh, Ravens did. Yeah, I I mean I just I don't think. And that was a close game. For it, it was to be honest, the Ravens completely stopped the running game, and and Tom Brady was somehow. Uh, uh, well, Mm. Right, how my ha- favorite play, by the way, okay, just a little with side the note. last throw. The, the, my favorite play of uh, <coughs> the last week with the Saturday and Sunday, all four games, was <coughs> the slightly backwards um, screen pass to, I think it was Edelman. Oh, the flea and, flicker? And he, like, just tucks it to the wide open receiver downfield and, the like, touchdown. oh, it was yeah. so perfect. Oh, I was so oh, happy. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, the yeah, flea the trick play. Yeah. That was a pretty sick play because all the safeties bit on it for just a second, and then they realized, oh, he's throwing the ball, and they started running back. They played like th- they had like three of those in a row where they did that screen pass, and yep. then and, and they and they started to run with it, and then oh, they set it up so perfectly. Well, and, then, and Edelman like, used to be a, Edelman yeah. was a quarterback in college. Yeah, and you, you could know, tell so by like, that throw. It was perfect. <laughs> oh yeah, beautiful spiral, right dropped right in his hands. Oh man, that was gorgeous. The only thing that could have made that moment more perfect is if they both like Brady and Edelman took off their helmets and just like. French kissed for like a moment. Like, <laughs> oh. Damn, Will, you're really gay tonight. <laughs> like, Big gay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Colts, Patriots. What chance do the Colts have? Uh, it's slim. Honestly, I don't. I'm not even gonna give them the thirty. I'm gonna give it like eighty twenty. I'm going pass all the way. All right. But we need it, a, we, if Andrew oh, Luck pulls this off, though, we're no, gonna he be, has a name. I forgot. We're gonna be using. Stone we're gonna be talking guy. about his name in a whole different light. <clears throat> yeah. All right, Stone Guy. First, you have to give us your Packers Seahawks With percentage. Score? No score percent. Like what? 50, like, 50 down the middle. You're gonna say fifty fifty. See, I was, there's there's no way I to call that game. There. Cause if did one, we do that? Yeah. If, we, if, if we one side shows up compared to the other, one team's gonna win. If Rodgers and his defense shows up, they win. If the Seahawks defense and Fucking what's his nut? Russell Wilson. Wilson shows up, Packers lose. It's all going to be who actually shows up to play. Who wants it more? Which is a scary thought, because after last year's, after Rodgers and them losing to the Seahawks, how much do they want it again? All right, but here's the question. Let's say um, let's say Aaron Rodgers gets nailed the first couple times in the first quarter and goes out and Matt Flynn comes in. You still think the... Oh, fuck no. You when don't think so? He ain't no Aaron Rodgers. Flynn's pretty fucking good, though. Flynn but like I said, if their defense shows up and we can hold their run game, Flynn ain't a bad quarterback. Right. It just takes... Seahawks. I think it two, would depend on It takes Seahawks one game. time to underestimate Flynn, and he's going to drop it right into Nelson or Adam's hands. And they'd be yep. like, oh shit, what happened? But then they got to defend it, because there'll probably be like, there'll probably be like two minutes left, and Russell Wilson's like, like Rodgers, and like Tom Brady, can score in two minutes or less. He can do it. He's Matt Flynn likes, he likes being the badass backup for Aaron Rodgers. You he know does, that. and he's he been does. putting the pressure several times now. Yep. But do I think he can hold up to the Seahawks? Fuck no. If it was the Patriots? Not, not over a whole game. Maybe. No, yeah, that, that's what I was saying. It depends. What, if Aaron Rodgers goes out, it depends at what, what point in the game he goes so out. So if it's third quarter, um, Packers and the Packers have, have like a lead, then they have a chance. You know. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. think I think either way, it'll be a damn good game. At yep. least I it hope it will. Be. I hope it. I hope the Seahawks don't just crush them. I I want the I want it to like I want the Packers to win by like three points. That that's like my ideal game. I would yeah. love for them to just crush so, the shit out of them. Also, I want the game. No. Yeah. That, so. That's so not going to happen. No, I can, hope it's I can see it going the other way. I can't see it going like... You shut your dirty pothole. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. So, so, all right, so what do you think, uh, Stone Guy, about the uh, Colts pass? Uh, I, I said 35. Yeah, 35 so you're, you're drunk, guy. Get your name oh. straight. Damn it. <laughs> all right. This thing, I'm not Colts too pass. sure. Because Luck's a damn good quarterback, but I think the Patriots overall is a better team. Because that's the thing. When you think the Colts, all you think is Luck. You don't think of their receivers, their running backs. It's just Andrew Luck and the Colts. Patriots got Gronk. They've they got do. Some of they do have weapons. some decent players, but like. But again, when, I, when I, most I would people say that, think of the Colts, they think of just luck. That's it. That's all they really. They, they just think of the concept of luck. Yep. Like the, the chance of them winning the game is it's, like they found like a yep. Blarney Stone underneath a bridge one day. And <laughs> Tom Brady trips on a pebble and breaks his ankle. You don't know. And like quality quarterbacks but, too. Like yeah, they. they I was like, because they have that. Manning for like what fourteen years or something <laughs> ridiculous. They just you don't have any weapons to go with it. Yeah, I say that's it. It's like their quarterback could be. Well, wasn't good. Johnny Unitas their quarterback? No, no. Maybe Johnny not. Manziel? Johnny Unitas. Oh. You weird. Oh, you big is. weird. All right, anyway. 
<laughs> um, so you Heck, say. You care what either team but the Patriots or the Patriots? The Packers. Any team but the Packers? No, we are. We I just explained that the only team you care about is the Packers. Yeah. Like before you showed up, actually, coincidentally, you came here to defend yourself. So that's kind of like I guess karma. Or I just saw that one downstairs. I was like, he must be a Christmas. <clears throat> So, uh, <laughs> oh, were you getting lonely? <laughs> nice, 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 so you say you say the Patriots have an overall better team. Uh, I agree. Uh, yes, oh, damn, I agree with you. I totally that's why they play for me. That's why I think they're gonna win. All right. So. Well, all right. So by how? Like, what's it? What? What chance do you get the Colts? Or thirty percent if they're lucky. I don't see the Colts coming in and doing 30% awesome. if they're lucky. All right, so, so I would pretty... love to see them come in and just wreck the Patriots and just upset City. But I don't think it will happen. I don't think it will happen. Yeah. No. So it's All pretty right. it's pretty unanimous, and we think Pats are going to the bowl. Just how I wish the Panthers would beat the Seahawks. Did I think it was going to happen? Fuck no. Would have been awesome if it did. Yeah. But it didn't happen. Yeah, you because well, then you wouldn't be concerned about beating the Panthers. Yeah, but not at all. <laughs> not I mean, at all. all right. So, so well, what, what are we pretty sure of? We're pretty sure it's gonna be Pats and we're, Seahawks. We're yeah, quite Pats, sure Seahawks. it's gonna be Pats. We're <laughs> we're pretty undecided about whether it's gonna be the Seahawks or the Packers. We're all really hoping it's gonna be the Packers, but we're all pretty sure it's. Probably we have the Seahawks, the Seahawks drawn Seahawks. into this already. So yeah, yeah so, I mean, I don't right. think we've heard enough to change that decision. Probably so let's not. say so let's say it's Seahawks Pats. All right. Are we sticking with our original <sighs> prediction of uh, the Pats winning? I don't no, know. Seahawks man. if it's those two. Yeah. Yeah. We have, have this Pats circled, but I, I'm gonna say Seahawks actually. If if everything goes the way it's supposed to on paper, then I think the Seahawks double with, with up. With the way C- the Seahawks are playing this postseason, I... <clears throat> even though I don't want them to. Do That's like a little cliff note. No one wants the Seahawks to get another the Super Panthers Bowl. Panthers just like been a better. For them. Yeah. I think it's mainly nobody up in Alaska cares anymore about the Seahawks because all the damn bandwagoners. Yeah. Uh, from uh, like the past year, everyone's like, oh, I'm this sort of fan. Oh, Seahawks, they're this shit. Wait, weren't you just a Dolphins fan? <laughs> or weren't you some sort of Browns fan? Oh, no, I'm a Seahawks fan all the way No, now. that's why I stopped liking them because I, I was like a Ravens fan for like five years and they won the Super Bowl. Did a bunch of shit I hated in the offseason and then I was like, ah, what about the Seahawks? They were pretty interesting. Win the Super Bowl. Go to the store one day, like, see ten people standing in the line at the grocer to buy food, and they have all Seahawks hats and, like, hoodies and shit. I'm like, I don't like this team anymore. Like, this is boring. <laughs> it's boring to like a team that everyone else likes. That's what I thought, but you know what? All the time, if I wear my Packers sweater out in public or at work, I get people <clears> all the time, like, I hope the Packers well, do it, man. Well, it doesn't matter, what, ass. Yeah. It doesn't matter like, what your team is. Nobody hates the I would say, man, I hope they kick some ass, too. I don't well, at least you like a team that, like, even the, like... The average layman can follow. You, you're not like a big Bills fan, or you're just I'm not a cow- fucking cheese. I'm honestly glad I'm not a cowboy <laughs> fan. That disappointment's gotta get old. Right? <laughs> like I, I feel so bad for Kyle. He's uh, such a fan, but man, it's gotta be old to watch your team fuck up. Dude, and right, fuck you know up what though? And fuck up he's over gotta be over pretty again. stoked about this season as a whole, though, because Romo didn't choke. No, he didn't. This is like the first season ever they made it to the postseason, and Romo didn't choke hard. Like. Well, First season we will mention the game defense. before where his defense carried him, but well, that's no, a different matter. No, we, we, <laughs> that don't matter. Doesn't no. matter. We're, we're, no. we're, we're trying to we're trying to be be positive here. All right. Like, <laughs> Are you guys uh, ready to move on to some videos real quick? Here? I'm ready. Oh yeah, let's do a little little video. Such tremendous athleticism, and there's the running into the kicker. You know, Jared McCauley called it. Soccer where they fake the injury for the yeah. penalty. Yeah. Oh, I got hurt. Oh. <laughs> and, and then you look at the penalty close up, you're like, you didn't even get touched. At least in soccer, yeah, no, it's that was great. Definitely a Dennis Rodman flop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, he was like, you know, kickers are just soccer players that got kind of kicked out of their team because they weren't fast runners. <laughs> I hate all of you guys for dissing on soccer so hard, <laughs> dude. I actually like, like soccer. Like, soccer, soccer is shit. such a badass game, too. And like, I played that as a well, kid. Well, you a can't lot. say and that people a, don't flop in soccer. I was soccer. a fucking awesome soccer player. Oh no, people definitely flop in soccer. <laughs> but like, as much as like Chris says this all the time, too. Like, pulling a flop, fooling the ref—that's part of the game. Oh yeah, in soccer like, yeah, for sure. No, yeah, in any pull, game, in any like game. fucking that <coughs> right there. Fooling the like, officials, in any game, part of the game. Fooling the officials. Uh, people flop in football all the time for fucking pass interference calls or for you yeah. know. How many times does the catcher like grab the ball and like like and move, move it out of the way? Yeah, you know, like baseball references. I mean, the catcher moving the ball to fool yeah. the plate umpire, but yep. every time, like any sport there is, that's part and of the game. The guy's still in the base, like the sliding in and jumping up, like you got it, no problem. Start taking off his gloves like he made it, even though we know he probably got tagged. 
It's sad that, like, <coughs> the whole goal of sports in the end is just to, like, fuck with the people trying to officiate. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, we're gonna move on. I'm good I, with it. I think, actually, that the, was an awesome play, though. the next video... Wait. What the... Hang on. Dun, 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 dun. Technical difficulties. Drunk guy is possibly <laughs> drunk. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Okay, now hang on a second. Yeah, let me know when you want to take another shot of vodka. I'll, I'll take one with you. I'm almost, I'm almost wondering if we should uh, segment this. We're gonna go, like, we're gonna talk about some new stuff now, and I don't know if it will be as funny anymore because this is about like the Charlie Hebdo shootings. So I don't, like, should we go on to that? I mean, we can skip over it to some ridiculous bullshit, but like. I kind of wanted to talk about this, and if I don't talk about it right now, I guess I can do it at the next podcast. Give us the rundown. What's, what is yeah, it? What, I don't even know what you're talking I about. I don't either. Do you guys want to know the Charlie Hebdo story where terrorists in Paris attacked a, all right, all right. a journalist office pretty I'll much? Yeah. yeah, basically what he just said. So this uh, there's this news newspaper type of deal, uh, news publication called Har- Charlie Hebdo. And they did. They do a lot of uh, secular secular news and comics and stuff. So they did a comic strip making fun of the Prophet Muhammad, and which this isn't their first time, by the way. No, they, they actually yeah. In 2012, Muslims yeah. firebombed their uh, okay. Muslims firebombed their offices for doing here? a similar thing. Yeah, I was saying, yeah, just, <clears throat> just just bring in a box. Okay. So uh, they did a con. I don't have the comic offhand, but. They did a comic making fun of the Prophet Muhammad, and uh, I, I think it was ISIS or just um, Muslim ISIS, Muslim ISIS came, claimed responsibility. Okay, so they came in and shot and killed twelve of the people that worked there, and a police officer or something like that, or one or two police officers. Yeah, that were stationed there because of the <clears throat> threats already on Charlie Hebdo. Right, and so basically there are people saying that this was all a hoax. And that these shootings never happened. So, we're gonna go over that. It's a hoax. It clearly happened. I don't know how you can just... Ginger? I got one, thank you. Like, I get the idea of it being staged for publicity, because all of a sudden, Charlie Hebdo went from a magazine that was barely noticeable to all of a sudden, they sold three million copies of the first issue. I was gonna mention that, is what's so funny is, like, Muslim extremists... Their plan backfired 100%. Yes, because they, they're like, oh, people saw this. It makes our, it like defames our God or <coughs> our prophet or whatever. So we need to go in and teach them a lesson. And in doing that, they made themselves look like fucking violent, regressive assholes. And like, everybody wants like more of this shit now. Because they want to find out what made these people go into a murderous rage. And it turns out that it's just like a silly little cartoon. Like, just like if you, you know, you did a, like, watched Family Guy and it had a, a little bit where God has sex with a hooker or some shit. You know, you don't see people like going up in arms and like fucking yeah, shooting yeah. Seth MacFarlane over that shit. Well, they have done that where God has sex with a hooker. They've oh well, why not? God, they might have to do a lot of stupid stuff. You see, I, it's just an example, but anyway. So <laughs> I say, it has happened. So this and is, nobody went into a murderous rampage and shot Seth MacFarlane. So yeah. what does that say? So we're just gonna go over this guy that's trying to say that the. Well, fo- see, that's also something to say though, because Islam doesn't have a room or like a not only Christianity or Catholicism where it has a head of church where it actually you know sure. where everything's eventually determined well, on by the group leader, of people. Islam is straight up just people just take their interpretation of it, and there's several different versions yeah. of Islam out there. So they don't have well one interpretation. Guy calibrating the moral See, well, that's all religion is—an interpretation of a damn book written yeah. so many years exactly. ago. Exactly, and like the the biggest issue is that like. Muslims, they, okay, they, their the <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, colds get getting to me a little bit. Their religion says, in the book, this is like the main message: convert or be killed. It convert or be killed. They want to create a world where everyone worships Allah, you know. And if you don't worship Allah, you should die. And I'm sorry to break this to you, people of the Muslim faith. That's never gonna fucking reasonably happen. I'm sorry, like, the whole world's not gonna convert to your religion. Especially by force and fear. It don't yeah. work. You can only force people to do stuff so much by fear. Inspiration's so much more of an effective method. Yeah. Um, Alright, well, so, to the video. Dun, 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 I dun, can't, dun, dun. can't just push P anymore. 
because of stupid James. Review time. Oh, you a hooded man struck at or... some of our most Actually, cherished democratic this principles. This one's... Freedom of expression. This in a second, but we're gonna. Wait, is it not? Was that by the Amazing Atheist? No. It kind of sounded like it. No. All I'm right, going to so show you some that. footage of the Charlie Hebdo <coughs> shootings, which has been restricted or taken down from a number of websites. As you'll see, it contains no blood, gore, or graphic violence. It does, however, punch a major hole in the official story. You can draw your own conclusions. The following clip was played on France 24. You'll notice in the middle, a section is edited out. Des coups de feu en plein Paris. <laughs> Deux hommes viennent d'abattre un policier. Il est 11h30 ce mercredi. Armés et cagoulés, les deux hommes repartent. Ils revendiquent leur acte. Let's look at the clip that was edited out. Now, if we zoom in and slow it down, you'll see that the officer isn't actually hit by a bullet. There is a blast that hits the sidewalk just in front of him, but he is clearly not hit in the head as the corporate media is claiming. Let's watch it again. Notice that the head isn't rocked. All right, so they found the unedited version, and they they showed that that shot missed, and so they're saying that. The whole thing is a hoax. Now, or maybe he's got a sh maybe he shot him with a shotgun. Is what it looked like to me, and that is not a shotgun. Yeah, that's not a shotgun. That's an M that's a AK forty seven. What it looks like, yeah. but it might be even something. Okay, different. but it looks like an AK. Now, if you got shot in the head with an AK, obviously your reaction. Oh, there'd be blood the, everywhere. No, by the no, blast, so as it would be it. if he was actually hit. Notice the plume of dust about a foot in front of him as the shot hits the ground. Okay. Yeah, I was saying his head doesn't move, which. An impact of a bullet at that range oh, will head significantly move. affect your motor function. Sure. Like, I mean, so maybe it's a hoax. Well, you would die. You like, you would be dead, and there'd be a huge pool of blood. Up right. Well, and I mean, regardless of that, okay. Like they say they that it was a censored version, right? That had no blood or gore in it. But regardless <coughs> of any of that, like there would be a splatter on the sidewalk. There would be something. Yeah, you see shade just, or yeah, something. Like, something. Something would be blocked out. Even with all the video editing. Not to mention, especially with the slow mo as that was, that last one, too, when it hit, there were, like, if you get shot at that kind of range with that sort of bullet, your head basically would explode, portions of it, anyway. Like, there, there would, would be a, a large, yeah, there would be a large disformity that would occur right. rapidly. <clears throat> exactly, and this is the way this get like, this is the core of what this guy's video is trying to say. Now, what I have to tell you is there's this thing called, uh, journalism i guess you want to say and what it consists of is getting a story whether it's through like a video feed through like some kind of a like a what are they called like a what's what's it called when somebody gives you like a like a little scoop all right i guess that's what's called a scoop, scoop. <laughs> um so somebody gives you a scoop or like you see a video of something and this is obviously like 12 people died two officers down like that's a scoop you need to publish that shit immediately so a journalist watches this footage, writes a piece about it, in, in which they like detail, you know, what they saw on the video. Now, all these people are dead. That officer's dead because he got shot a fuck ton besides the, the headshot that missed, obviously. Now, when the journalists, like a lot of journalists actually published that. And the, uh, like, there's this gratuitous footage where it's an officer is like run by and shot through the head. Yeah, I've seen that multiple times when watching Mom's MSNBC, where they're clearly stating that officer got shot in the head, and they they show the edited version where it just blacks out, like you were like we just saw originally. So seeing the guy not get his head blown away is a little disconcerting in trusting the media. Right. No. Well, but the, honestly, the, the thing does is, does anybody that... really trust the media no. anymore? No. Well, if they do, they're <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Every it, channel's biased. Everyone yeah. trying to push their agenda. I mean, like, you should... Well, and one of the big reasons is because they get these they get these news stories, and they just, like... It doesn't occur to the journalists that, oh, if somebody really got shot in the head here, then there would be actually, like, a big pool of blood. You know, like, that's not what getting shot in the head looks like. That doesn't even occur because their brain's like, I got the biggest story of the whole year. You know, like, <laughs> that's what they're thinking. They don't actually think, like, let's have some valid, like, 
you know, let's think about this. Let's go about about let's this. Be logical like the, about in the most like, Yeah, let's not just jump to any sort of conclusions here. But anyway, regardless, there are dead people saying this whole thing is a hoax is a bunch of bullshit. And like, yeah, I mean, I agree that like the media jumps to conclusions and like will just basically like make shit up just to make their story sound good at times. And this is an example of that. And it's kind of fucking disgraceful, but <clears throat> to, j- to make that next <coughs> jump and say that 12 people didn't die when it's clear that, like, they have been declared dead by a medical examiner, like, that's that's taking a step too far. That reminds me of the Peace March held in the honor of these shootings. Did you see that? Where all, like, like a bunch of, like, six, seven world leaders got together and held a march when the whole of Paris, several million people are marching together. The only problem was the world leader march. It was like the world march was staged. All those world leaders weren't part this of the world a- march. Which they could say it was part of um, national security, which I kind of get a little bit. You obviously just had to attack. You don't want to put your world leaders in the middle of the whole crowd. Mm-hmm. But the whole point of that rally was a peace rally. Like, if you've seen the videos of it, some guy turned his speakers and put it towards the crowd and played Imagine by John Lennon. Mm-hmm. And, like, the whole crowd is singing Imagine with because the guy put his stereo to the fucking... The window, like the the rally, wasn't to be you know cause emotion. It was to show the terrorists we don't give a fuck and do what you want. We're a united country. Like that was the whole point of the rally. And for the world leaders not to show up, not alone us as Americans, we didn't send one significant world leader. Not John Kerry. Not even John McCain. We mm-hmm. didn't send shit. We pretty much said, "Fuck you, Europe. It's your problem. You're terrorists." Which yeah. we clearly had our own problems. Well, we're part of the UN, so it's like our responsibility when when. You know, this is a freedom of speech issue or freedom of expression issue, obviously. Thing, Paris isn't even freedom of speech. They don't have the freedom of speech we have. Theirs is limited. Their government steps in all the time to be like, you can't publish this shit. Mm-hmm. Well, we a lot of, a lot of like, really ridiculous sources stepped in and was, like, in defense of Charlie Hebdo. Like, the Pope and shit. Like, there's no way the Pope believes in freedom of speech. Like, you can't say Jesus Christ <laughs> is a rapist and the Pope's like, freedom of speech. Like... That doesn't have, like it's kind of silly at times, but you know that that's what this all boils down to is like I don't know how you compared the post or the the Pope and rape together, but I mean if you're going I Catholic, really, how can you not? I mean Catholicism, <laughs> all right. Let's be real now. Walter <laughs> Boys and Priest, no good record there, but still, that's not a fair yeah, comparison. You're right. America should have at least sent Dennis Rodman or something over there. <laughs> <laughs> I know we could send North Korea, but yeah, not Paris. no, send send to uh, ISIS and have them like you know <coughs> play the them, best, like the purposefully friend. lose to them at basketball so that they can feel better about themselves. Maybe they won't be such assholes anymore. Well, that's the problem. He'd probably turn them into Kim Jong Un and be like, "Hey, you guys, meet my best friend. <laughs> yeah. You guys get along. Me great. and Kim, me and Kim is smoke lots of weed. <laughs> have you guys, so, you guys seen the interview? I seen it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought so that funny. movie was actually pretty hilarious. It was pretty funny like, at times. There were parts that were... And my favorite part was when they were like, Eminem just said he was gay. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah, at the beginning. They are like, wait, hold on. Like, <laughs> That was the best part. <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> All right, anyway, enough spoilers for that movie. movie. <laughs> no, that we didn't... Trust me, we didn't spoil anything. I, didn't even spoil it. I mean, All right, what's we have next? got to see this movie, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so watch moving on. I haven't seen it yet. You haven't seen it? Oh, no, oh. it's pretty good. This is a woman who thinks monster energy drinks are satanic. <laughs> what could be wrong with this video? She's not completely wrong. Hold on. Okay, okay yeah. She... <laughs> Look at your M closely. There's a gap right here in the letter M. It's never connected. So you go into Hebrew. The letter Vav is also the number six. Short top, long tail. Short top, long tail. You could have here in Hebrew 666 on the can. But my interest is the word monster. What do you see in the O? There's a cross. Okay. What has Christ got to do with an energy drink, let alone the name monster? Who takes this shit literally? Jesus Christ like, is going to haunt your dreams. She's going to have next to Sarah Palin. What does Jesus have to do with an energy drink? I don't know. What does Jesus have to do with... I, like, you can look at, like, a letter T on anything, but, like, Jesus don't belong in the, you know... 
what I don't know. I'm I, I'm drawing a blank here, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. Jesus doesn't sponsor the Toronto Blue Jays. I fucking lost it. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the te- the Devil nice Rays. Nice the damn Canadians. Blame them for everything. Hey. You think the Devil Rays <laughs> pray before a game? I don't think Kids so. Blame Canada. <laughs> that was awesome. Blame Canada. Damn Canadians. Blame them for everything. Canadian guy from the corner. Hey. <laughs> Blame <laughs> those Canadians. South Park got it right. Just blame Canada. <laughs> so I thought, well, maybe this is a Christian company then. BFC at the bottom of the can. Do you know what that stands for? That's the F word. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait, DFC. Oh, BFC. <laughs> That's the F word. Oh, How does sorry. that have anything to do with Jesus? The F word's F U C K, oh, no. lady. She's don't worry. Spell. Don't worry. She'll explain it, I bet. Watch. Oh, okay. big, big can. <laughs> big oh, can. that's sacrilegious, don't you know? That needs to be burned and <laughs> She's still sent to, to your nearest recycling bin in its ashes. She still Wasn't the spell. whole thing with the BFC can? <laughs> Just saying. That's the F. Buck, BFC. Yeah. Buck is not spelled with a B. Unless it's silent all of a sudden. No, it's spelled it's wrong big, all these years. Big fucking can. No, it's it's Bolivia fried chicken. No, I bet she's going to say it's probably like ban fucking Christ. <laughs> <laughs> no, she just said it was big fucking can. Wasn't the can. whole thing with the BFC can because of the uh, Doom movie <coughs> with the BFG? Yes, I love that too. Doom. <laughs> It, well, not even not the movie, because the movie was kind of eh. But the old school game. The movie was Don't so tell silly. me I was the only one that loved I, Doom. And like, <laughs> Doom 3D. Like, dude. The movie, she, Doom the movie was, was terribly dumb. silly with The Rock, though. I'm sorry. Yeah, that one was. I was terribly bad. silly. Yeah. I think she wants the BFC. Yeah, <laughs> she wants yeah. the big fucking the big cock. fucking <laughs> cack. <laughs> you know what BFC you know, I stands I wish they were all this big. Look at this can. Are you kidding me? You know what that'd do to my shit? Oh. Look, she's like beating off the can. I need a wheelchair after that one. (laughs) In fact, they write it on the side of the can, so I know that's the F word. Okay. Now, do you... Holy shit, you're a genius. Holy shit. You know what a milk milk is. Yes, that's on the... (laughs) At least she's doing better than uh, Floyd Mayweather. That was so sad. That was a sad day for him. That was a low blow right there. <laughs> yeah. So Mayweather just. I mean, so boom! You... There you go. One. Get my cheap shot in now. Box. Milf, stick it, and you will too. This is not a Christian. <laughs> Clearly, she's not a milf, otherwise, she'd dig it. <laughs> yeah. She, she's not quite. I don't know. I, I don't think I'd put her in the milf category, would you? That's what I'm yeah. saying. She's I, I would call her a Millie. Milfs. Maybe right. a kill. Moms, so I'd like to ignore. <laughs> <laughs> a Millie, a Millie, a Millie. In company at all. So why would they have put a cross on the can? Here is the message Antichrist. 666 in Hebrew. And then the Bible talks about the beast in Revelation. And look at Monsters ad. This is their statement. You see. Holy shit. You've solved the mystery. Illuminati conspiracy, baby. Someone get Scooby Doo. <laughs> All I heard was. Rut row. Ronster energy, Raggy. <laughs> Ronsters, you red devil. See these M's everywhere. Hats, t shirts, bumper stickers. Is there another agenda here? If- I agree. Just saying. She needs to find a new hobby, and we need to find a new video. To Agreed watch. on that one. Yeah. What do you got? What else you got? Oh, we we have a little Satan tangent going on. <laughs> weird anime song. Oh god. That was weird. <laughs> I can show the new that that actual anime little thing next time. Everyone is <laughs> fucking Mario. weird. And you here for another edition. We have a little video from Illuminati. Vigilant Christian yeah, Mario. In today's video, I wanted to show you that in very popular. His name's just Mario. That looks more oh. like Zelda. <laughs> yeah, that looks yeah, like Agreed. Zelda. The Vigilant Christian I was really Mario. confused there for a moment. I was like, what the fuck's going on? Because that's clearly Link. It's King Koopa. Other video games? Yeah. Even old ones like Zelda, there has been Illuminati symbols placed in them for a long time. So in this video here today, we're going to look at specifically Zelda and Illuminati symbolism. So let's get right into it. Now obviously the uh, picture you can see is an obvious sign of the Illuminati eye inside of the pyramid. 
and uh, there's a lot more symbolism than that. You will see the um, Triforce, which is this symbol here. Isn't it supposed to be an I if it's an Illuminati symbol? I mean, no, it's a Triforce. You should yeah, it's, okay, all right, just making sure is in fact uh, really the Illuminati Eye. That's what it is, and uh, they show you that in the game it is worshipped. Here you see uh, people bowing down and worshipping a glowing Illuminati pyramid, and it says, Faced by an onslaught of evil, the people could do nothing but appeal to the gods. This, okay, so, apparently, My mom was because, this, <laughs> because this is set in a fictional world, this should be taken literally. And it was goddesses, I think? Illuminati. So you see in the game here, they are appealing to the gods because the gods are going to save them from evil. All right, you know what? I don't want to watch. This is actually kind of a long one, so I don't want to get into it. I thought it was ridiculous when I watched it, but uh, here's a video I'm going to set you guys off on, and then I'm going to run out and pee. So you have to watch the whole thing, and then we'll comment about it, how ridiculous it is. Okay, so I'm going to check out the exorcism now. Still going on. All your legions of poison. All your legions of poison. Out! Yeah, right now. Out! All your legions of poison. All your legions of poison. Out! In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Drink the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' mighty name. Drink the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Look at Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. By the blood of Jesus Christ. By the blood of Jesus Christ. You have no legal ground to be in here. You have no legal ground to be in here. You have to leave. You can't trespass on the cross. You can't trespass on the cross. You cannot trespass. By the blood of Jesus Christ, you have to leave. Using the name of Jesus to pull him out. We lose love. We lose the love of Jesus. We, we surround this man with angels right now. Father, we ask, you to, we ask you to hug this man right now with your love, Father. Here, puke the demon into this Starbucks cup. <laughs> like, hey, hey, that's, that's a red solo cup. And we all know how much everybody loves, loves to Red puke. Solo Cup. Loves to puke like, in Red Solo Cup. Honestly, the most epic thing I've ever seen was Dwayne's cousin. She was super fucked up on her 21st. She had to puke in the middle of Coots. Puked in two fucking Red Solo Cups. The whole thing. <gasps> filled up one, set down. Filled up another one, set down. I'm good. Didn't spill a drop. All the nice. in the cup were just like, <laughs> we're all just kind of like amazed she just puked. And then second of all, she didn't spill a damn drop. She was classy while she puked. Like, how the fuck do you manage that I, shit? I don't know if that's possible, but if I was there, I probably could accept the classiness of that That's what you can do. You're just, like, you almost wanted to make her drink more to prove that she just did it. Like, horse. Like, you prove that shit now. She was probably Bullshit. just expelling a demon. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Quick side note, actually. I did my good deed yesterday, last night, after I was at the bar for a little while. I helped some fucking super drunk guy who, like, had to go outside and puke, and then because it was all slick and nasty and icy out, he like slipped and fell in his own puke. And Aww. then like his girlfriend was trying to get him like in the car, and he was like, he's like six five, like big fucking dude, like, and it was slick out, and he just like ate shit on the ice and like rolled around in his own pile of puke. She ah, was trying to yuck. like get him into the car, and like I went to leave and like started my truck, and I was like, ah, I gotta help this girl. Like I just feel bad, like. So the two of us, like, dragged him over <coughs> and threw him in the car. Yeah. yeah. Well, good for you, man. Getting him, getting him into the house and up the stairs and into the bedroom is her that problem. Was, yeah, that was her problem. <laughs> I, helped, I helped her get him in the car. Side, side note, your driveway is icy as fuck. That's no as yeah. shit. Oh, it yeah. is so slick out right now. You need now. to get some salt on that, by well, the way. I, I just sanded it yesterday. The put, top I put, part. I put, I put grout over all of it, and then it started raining today. And it, Ugh. Yeah, well, this this morning it, it was fine. Yeah, but it's been freezing raining for a while. Like, the yeah. roads were so fucking nasty on the way down here. Next time I go out to pee, I'll do some more sanding. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> yeah, that'll only be about three minutes, so we're fine. Uh, so, <laughs> I decided it's gonna be a, a shorter show tonight. I wasn't feeling too great, so, 
feels like I've been on for quite a while, even though we've only been recording for like an hour and a half, so. He's a fucking disgrace. Dude, I'm sick, so shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, have... Whose fault is that? I'm pretty sure we already explained. You probably could have been fine if you hadn't gone to your normal lifestyle of drinking and smoking all the time. The smoking True. Could have <laughs> the smoking True. you could have dealt with that. The beer drinking, well, that's like necessary. It. Every doctor says I wouldn't be the true. I wouldn't be the true <laughs> drunk guy. <I> <coughs> All right, so PMI, I'll get more PMI. more funny videos next time. Less <laughs> less serious ones, maybe one or two serious ones. But we will get some funnier videos for next time. Hopefully, if the Packers win, you're coming back. I'll come back. Goddamn better. better. Yeah. All right. And if they lose, we want you to come back, and I want you to tell you how, <laughs> how you feel about. It. Yeah. We, we, we want to we want to find uh, out if you're if you're happy for the. It's, I'll just Seahawks. tell you that it's all Aaron Rodgers, and if he had a, or a healed leg, we'd win the Super Bowl. So that's my excuse. <laughs> as long as he gets some of I already know my that. planned excuse. It's good. Right. It's okay. so, He's got it laid out. It's right. cool. Cheesehead. <laughs> so it, 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 if Seattle wins, but barely. Like if it's a close-ass game, if Seattle wins it at the very last minute. Depends if it's a bullshit ref call. If, if they it, win clearly on like an awesome touchdown pass, I'll accept it. But if it's a ref bullshit call like they did against the Cowboys twice now... Mm -hmm. I might well, have an issue remember with the it. first one was actually for the Cowboys. Yeah, you, and the you know second one was karma because Jerry Jones pissed off the ref. Yeah, hey, that, I, dude, I that feel like the first one was bullshit. <laughs> we all know it. That shit yeah. on Des Bryant, that is the rule. That's not the first no, time that shit's happened. That was literally letter of the rule. Like it was a great fucking catch, but the way the rule's written, it was clearly an incomplete pass. Right. So when people are freaking out, like, yeah, he caught it, but by the definition of the game of the rule, it's not a complete catch. So right. the official and, didn't fuck oh up, but God. the rule should be changed. <laughs> Have I'm a good night, say, everybody. I don't, I don't want to start talking about this right now. <laughs> we'll we'll talk about it off screen. We'll bring it to you next week. All right. <laughs> next peace, week. Peace out, everybody. I don't know. Either way, no. That see, that's the thing. I don't even know.